What's up everybody? This is Connor and Joshua with Chamber One Tactical. Today's video is going to be featuring the two full-size guns that Springfield has out right now that are kind of the most popular that you're going to find. So we have the Springfield Echelon uh, and then we have the Springfield Prodigy. So the Prodigy is going to be based off of more of the you know 2011 um, platform yep. and then the Echelon is going to be your polymer framed you know duty gun if you will. Um, so we've had a lot of trigger time between the both of the guns so this video is going to be kind of about our findings and shooting the guns and which one we would recommend or which one we may not recommend um, after. So let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about real quick is we're going to go over the price point of both the uh, firearms. Um, the Prodigy right now, what do you have the Prodigy at? So the Prodigy is going to come in around $1,250. Okay. And now they actually have, you know, like the comped version mm -hmm. that are coming in around $1,350. $1,350, okay. And then the Echelon I actually saw the other day was like $450, which is kind of crazy because I paid almost $700 when it first came out. So to see that they've dropped that much is kind of crazy. Um, wow. But we've got a gun store guy that we talk to all the time, and we were in there the other day, and he said, well, it's not a Glock. So, you know, that's there's some guys out there that Glocks are the only things that are ever going to say are worth anything. So <laughs> that may be why it's gone down in value. Um, but we're going to start off with the Echelon and kind of go through what you're getting and do a comparison of both of them, um, comparing what features you have on there. And then, uh, or like I said, we'll tell you guys which one we would go with. So yep. on the Echelon, um, you are going to get metal sights front and rear. Um, they are tritium filled and they're actually a pretty good set of sights. Uh, and I, I actually like them a lot because they're not those gigantic sights. I really don't like the huge sights that SIG puts on their guns. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't like the plastic sights that Glock puts on their guns. So I think this is a, a good set of sights to be the standard on the Echelon. Um, you know, I don't know if this is exactly the size of a gun that most people would carry, but it's nice to see that you have night sights on there if you wanted to carry it. Yep. Um, what's on the Prodigy? Yeah, so the Prodigy, obviously we do have a Holosun on here that we put on, but it comes with some taller sights on it mm -hmm. with a fiber optic in the front. And I think, I, I, we have the green, but I think they do have options, whether it be red or green. Um, but yeah, mine, mine has got the green fiber optic, blacked out rear, and it did not come with plates. So I do remember that I had to buy, an, a, an, a, I think it was about around $80, mm -hmm. an optic plate before I could put this Holosun on here, but it does co-witness fine. Um, and then one thing that we did notice is kind of with these sights, it's a little bit different to where the back kind of has like a, a longer U mm -hmm. and you actually put the circle in the bottom of the U kind of where it meets the curvature. And we just had to get used to that, but just a little, a little weird. yeah, it's a little bit different, but um, in, in the daytime, these sights work great. The, that fiber optic glows up real fine. And uh, I actually appreciate how low they were able to get that optic. Yeah, I mean, I, I prefer the setup that the Echelon has on it. I don't yeah. know if it's just the newer way or, you know, if it's just the difference between more of a 1911 or 2011 style and, you know, what they're able to do with these newer, you know, Glock style handguns, if you will, the polymer frame stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the Echelon, you can direct mount your, your optic and you don't need plates because their optic system is really, the really best. cool. You can almost put any optic you want to on here yep. without having to go buy plates. Um, and it... it without having to do anything co-witnesses with the standard you know site so i really yep. like what the echelon provides because uh, i don't like having to go get a gun and then order a bunch of stuff after i want to be able to take it and put an optic on it immediately and not have to worry about plates so i really like what they've done on the echelon uh, moving on to the actual slide and slide serrations um, the echelon if you guys haven't seen our full review of the echelon go check that out because we go in depth of this gun but the cuts on this slide are some of my favorite um, that you can really find right now. They've done a really good job of getting a lot of texture on there. And then they kind of taper 
the slide down right before it gets to the chamber, uh, almost creating a little wall for your, if, if your hands did slide, it would stop right there and you could still rack the gun. So yep. pretty cool system that they've got. Um, it obviously takes a lot of weight off of the slide too, which is nice. Um, and then they've got these kind of wings that sit out on the back. They again, taper the slide down as you get to the back of the gun and then they pop it right back out to make these little ears that you can hold on to, um, similar to what you see on like an HK VP9. Yeah. Uh, so they've done a lot of work on the slide that I really like, uh, and it's all functional. It's mm -hmm. not, not any of it is just for look or for right. show. Every bit of it is something you can actually use to better, you know, the shooting experience. So show us the, the yeah, Prodigy. Obviously, the Prodigy is... I guess compared to that, it's lacking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just just in comparison. But I mean, over the, the entire top of it, there's nothing. Whereas that one is, and then the serrations are right here at the very tip mm -hmm. of the barrel. Which you know, I just noticed as we shoot this gun, it gets hot right there. Really hot. And um, you know, so getting closer to the back, it just seems like it's a little bit cooler. Obviously, it's still going to be hot, mm -hmm. but it seems like it gets the hottest here at the end. And maybe that's just my mind, but um, I actually really appreciate how they did on that echelon. But yeah, this one, it's just got like maybe four slots at the very front and then some more here in the back. So in comparison, you know, it makes this one look pathetic, yeah. but you know, for a 1911 or 2011 design, you know, that's, that's pretty typical. Yeah. Uh, and then moving on, obviously the biggest difference between the two are going to be the frames. Mm -hmm. um, this frame is a modular system. So again, getting into the really cool factor of the echelon, what makes it pretty neat. So you can, it has an FCU similar to a P320 that you can take out of this frame and get a different size frame for it. Yep. Uh, so that's a pretty cool thing. And I don't know, we haven't looked into really if, if other companies are building frames for these guns yet for aftermarket stuff. Uh, but I'm sure if they haven't already, there will be some to come. Absolutely. Um, but I know we have <laughs> some texturing grips on here right now, so you can't see the texture. But we actually really like the texture mm -hmm. on the Echelon. It wasn't overkill um, like some guns do have but it was kind of the perfect amount of texture on the frame uh, that you could really ask for so and it's in all the right spots yeah. so we did like the texture on the frame this was just something um, we had a buddy of ours that owns his co a grip company and he told us about these cork grips and I was like well get me a set of them and this is the gun we were shooting a lot of the time so we threw it on this gun but uh, uh, if you guys want some gun grips tractiongrips.com he has the coolest grips out there, yep. and he's got a ton of different styles, a bunch of different textures. Again, I mean, this is cork, um, and I never really thought about cork, but this works really well. Even as your hand gets wet, mm -hmm. it still has texture. So it's a pretty cool system, but uh, if you guys want to check him out, the grips are like, I think, a maximum of 14 bucks. He does a really good job mm -hmm. of keeping the cost low, so go check him out um, and get you a set of grips for your gun. But um, moving on, like I said, you know, the the... We've kind of, like Joshua said, we've gone over all the things about this gun, but one thing that we really did like is the molding that they put around the slide stop slide release. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we, we use a very high um, support hand grip, and sometimes that does either push up or pull down on that slide stop slide release, either, either locking the slide or keeping it from locking uh, on the last round. So uh, we really like what they did on this. It's not hard to get to. It's very easy to use, but it's hard to accidentally put on and take off, so I really do like that about it. Right. What about the Prodigy? Now the Prodigy, th what's cool about this is you can put like an upgraded frame if you want. So like that one comes with back straps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't really come where you can make upgrades or customize it right out of the box. But if let's say you wanted to put like an Atlas frame or whatever on there, you can do that because it's basically built off the same template that a lot of other 2011s are built off of. Hmm. So you could change out that lower right there. But yeah, it's going to be the polymer grip right here. Honestly, the texture is fine for me. It's nothing crazy, but it was very practical. It felt fine. We, did, we never noticed this gun rolling around, moving around, slipping around in our hand. So um, I, I think the as frame is nice. As little recoil as that gun has, yeah. you could have really no texture on there and it would still shoot fine. Yep. Um, and then I really like the look of how far they came out with the rail. Uh, that's just, I've always liked to see the longer rail, even some that go all the way to the end. 
Um, but it's very practical as well because you can put a big old flashlight on there. So it is meant worth mentioning. You know, the nineteen eleven. This is going to have more of a nineteen eleven grip angle. Absolutely. Where this is going to have more of a you know Glock angle. Glock grip angle. Yep. Um, so as far as natural shootability, I, we've got to give it to the Prodigy for sure. But I do like the feel of the frame, just as far as the thickness goes. I feel that the Prodigy has a little little chubby grip to it yeah and i do prefer the slim more slim line feel of the echelon um as far as that goes but again you can't really deny the just natural point and shoot of the 1911 grip angle so yep. the prodigy is a very natural gun to shoot um Absolutely. as far as recoil because that is a you know you're looking at a polymer frame gun and you're looking at more of a heavier metal frame gun mm -hmm. um the echelon i actually it's not that the recoil is lower or the muzzle flip is lower because I think both are going to be, it's going to be a little bit more in recoil and a little bit more in muzzle rise. But I like the recoil impulse that the Echelon gives you over the Prodigy. Okay. The Prodigy is a little slow and clunky feeling to me, almost like a hydraulic feel. Um, it doesn't get back on target as fast as this gun. Uh, and I don't really know why that is. Maybe if we put a light on it and it helps pull it back down, that would help. But I do like this. I, we can shoot this gun very fast. And I would actually go and say that I can shoot the Echelon faster than the Prodigy. And it may just be because of how fast that slide is able to get back down and I can get back on target. Um, Joshua may disagree with me, but, you know. I do. What, do. what do you think? Yeah, I mean, so I would say you are correct on the recoil impulse being lighter on that one. I agree with that. I, don't, I wouldn't s describe this as clunky. No, this I said is, that was lighter. You said this was lighter recoil? Mm -hmm. See, I, I thought the Echelon was actually lighter in recoil. Well, this it's a one, softer feel because it's the polymer's eating up some, yeah. of that, some of that slide coming back. Yeah, that yeah. might be. But this one, I wouldn't say that it's clunky at all. As a matter of fact, it's one of, I mean, when you pull this back, it's like butter. Yeah, clunky was not meaning it's, it's, I'm just saying, it's a and, smooth gun. It's just you feel, you feel that, you can feel every bit of that slide coming back and going back forward. It's just, it's a heavier feeling in the slide than you get with the Echelon. Yeah, I didn't notice that shooting the Prodigy. I thought it was a very smooth running gun. As far as the speed, um, I think I agree. I can shoot that one just a little bit quicker mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah. I think with the Prodigy, with it being single action, it's got a lighter trigger pull and then the reset. Um, it pushes it out a little bit better than some of the other 2011s that we've actually reviewed in the past uh but it's still nothing like that reset where it's actually pushing your finger out forward so if you're just you haven't trained in a little bit you just pull one out you're probably going to shoot that one a little bit faster but this one you could probably push yourself and end up shooting this one faster once you start getting used to the trigger trigger a little bit more yeah and that was one thing that i originally had a negative uh review on the prodigy with was mm -hmm. the trigger because original triggers on those guns are about the same weight as a standard like glock yep uh it's you know four and a half five pounds so joshua sent his off and actually had a trigger job done on it where the the trigger pulls probably more of like two and a half three pounds yeah it's right at three pounds and right. it really did make a better shooting experience yep. um, most of the shooting that i have on that gun is before the trigger job mm -hmm. so that may be part of you know shoot as far as how fast i can shoot it yeah um but the trigger on the echelon is one of those that you have to get used to a little bit on the prodigy in my opinion you know exactly what to expect on the Prodigy because you've, if you shot any 1911s or whatever, you know exactly what that trigger is going to do because yeah. you know it's not going to throw your finger out. The Echelon has a, it's a very light trigger pull and a quick reset, but the reset doesn't necessarily push your finger out as much as, say, a Glock would. Mm -hmm. um, but that reset is so short that it's, you know, like again, this is one of the fastest guns we can shoot right now just because that trigger's reset so fast. Yep. Um, so it really is hard when you get down to, the triggers are very different, but they the end result is very similar as far as how, as far as how fast you can fire the gun right. you know, accurately. So it's, it's kind of cool how they've been, they're able to do completely different guns, but almost end up with somewhat the, the same result mm -hmm. as far as you know, your shooting. Um, so Joshua. Yeah. What do you think as far as if you had to tell, tell someone to go with either of the pro I mean, this is America, and you can just go buy both. Um, <laughs> but buy if, you, both. If, if you were going to sell someone, hey, buy this, and if you, if, you know, if, you know, if you can only have one, which one yeah. are you going to say to go get? This is tough. I know. This is very tough. But 
I would say the echelon. Really? I know that shocks Connor because this is Joshua's baby. He loves. I that love guy. this prodigy. Yeah, it shoots great. I mean, it really does. But the reason I say that is because there are a lot of lemons out there with the Prodigy, yeah. or at least when they first came out. You know, it's kind of, I don't really hear that as much, mm -hmm. um, but when they first came out, they were having a lot of issues, especially with the, the feed ramp, and they just had a bad name. A lot of people, when you say Prodigy, they're like, oh, it's, you know, it's a cheap 2011. I know it's not a 2011, double stack 1911, you know, whatever. But mine has been great. Yeah. We've had probably ah, 20, uh, over 2,000 rounds yeah, for shot sure. A lot. Oh, in this gun, not a single malfunction. It is shot great. It the slide just gets smoother and smoother. The trigger is getting better and better. Yeah. I mean, it is just a great gun. But with the price point that you were talking about before, I did not even know that they were that low. In comparison to this, I mean, you're saving a whole lot of money. You're getting just about the same performance. I really enjoy the slide. My favorite part about the slide is what they did right here, having that that um, right in front of the chamber, that mm -hmm. big old ledge. Uh, they did a great job with that. The optic system, being able to not have to spend an extra $80 there. Um, the modularity, because I know that there are going to be companies coming out with probably shorter grips where you can make it more compact, shorter slides, all They'll that. They'll probably end up with alloy grips too. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be all sorts of aftermarket support for that where you're not going to see as much for this just because of the modular design. So as much as it hurts me to say, I would go with that, but this is still appropriate for some people, especially I'm very interested in that new compensated version that came out. It's not that much more, and based off the reviews we've seen, and I'll probably pick one up, um, they actually shoot really well. They, yeah. It helps reduce the recoil quite a bit because there is a lot of slide mass here. Can but you believe that I chose that over this? Not really, because that's, like I said, this is the gun that he goes to when he just wants to go out there and, yeah. you know, let off some steam. <laughs> and what the, the coolness factor of this one is you can air rack it so easy. I can air rack both of them. Yeah, but this one's <laughs> so much easier. I will say, I agree with you 100%. I would also pick the Echelon. Um, I hate that I we think agree. It's, I think <laughs> it's more practical. Yeah. And there's you can use it for, it's a lot more versatile as far as duty gun. I think you could also use this as a race gun. I think it's the recoil, uh, as far as how much the recoil it has, it shoots pretty flat for a polymer frame gun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think the Prodigy has a pretty good place because 2011s are very expensive um, if you go anywhere above you know, the Prodigies. So I do think if somebody's trying to get into a 2011 style gun, I know, again, this is not technically the 2011 because that's staccato, um, but this is the Springfield stock. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a good option if you're wanting a decent 2011. I think the Prodigy is a very good gun, and like you said, ours has been flawless. I yeah. mean, we haven't had any issues, um, and there have been some issues, but I think like maybe you said, I would choose this exact Prodigy over that. One. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this it really comes down to what I'm going to use most, and I think I would use the Echelon more than I would use the Prodigy. Like I said, this is America. You could just go buy both yep. and be happy with having both of them. <laughs> but uh, one last thing, the mags are a big difference. Yes. As far as price point, too. Yes. Because th these mags, um, I think we were looking at those. They were, what, $45? I can't remember because they are. these are Dura mags, I believe, yeah. that make these. Uh, because I bought an extra 20 round or 21 round. Whatever. Yeah, I think this is a 20 round. Um yeah, I think around that $30, maybe $35 mark. But they both are st like standard size mags. Both are yep. 17 round, correct? And this one's the same platform as like your Staccato and most 2011s yeah. out there. It's the same magazine, so you could buy higher end magazines if you wanted to. Well, guys, that's just the opinion that we have based off of, you know, what we found through shooting these guns. If you have any questions about either one or anything that you see on them, just let us know down in the comment section. If you'd like to help out our channel, just make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.